Uh, hello, this is Joe Hollis at Mountain Gardens. It's about April 20th, and I thought I'd just experiment with uh, making some short plant videos using this phone that I've borrowed. We'll see how this is going to work. So what we're looking at right here is wasabi. It's been blooming for a while. Wasabi is a very hardy stuff. It's almost evergreen. And it starts flowering very early, March. So you can see it's four petals. It's a brassica, it's a crucifer. Uh, and it's making these little pods that are gonna have the seeds in there. These stalks can get quite long sometimes, like three feet long, a snake it along the ground. Other interesting things. So we're right here in front of my house. Uh, I see a some jack-in-the-pulpits coming up. These are Asian species. I think it might be amirens. Jack-in-the-pulpits uh, aeroids. That is to say, always look really cool as they're coming up out of the ground and unfolding. There's a nice clump. And this is uh, yellow root. This will be Siberian ginseng sprouting up. They're kind of mingled together there. Giant Solomon seal coming up. That's a perfect stage for eating right there. Uh, I can't quite remember the name of this one. There's a, one of the evergreen gingers. Brunera, that is, another Siberian ginseng. And more of them coming around. This way we're seeing more and more ramps. These ramps are all self-sowing from... Uh, I planted some about 10 years ago in a moist part of my garden, which is quite a ways away from here, several hundred yards or more, and just in the last few years, I am noticing them everywhere. They've migrated all the, all the shady parts of the upper garden are now having ramps, very exciting. Because it is becoming endangered, or will be, in the woods from over harvesting. People around here dig them up. The American Indians were much more conservation there minded and they would just cut the above ground part and leave the root in the ground to come back, which is what we do. We collect uh, for one restaurant, collected 40 pounds this year. We just cut them just under the ground. And you can keep doing that forever. What else we're looking at here is Virginia bluebells, one of my very favorite wildflowers, but it's not a wildflower around here. Evidently it is in Virginia beautiful blue color. This is the Borage family, which is noted for blue, and often this pink and blue, which is, for example, uh, Lungwort has these pink flowers that turn sky blue. As well, it's a Scorpioid inflorescence, it's called. It curves around like this. Comfrey is in this family as well. You might recognize. I see a little bit of foam flower here. Giant hosta coming up. Let's walk around this way. There will be some flame azaleas here presently and giant uh, lilies, Chinese species lilies. This is one of the medicinal epimediums, barren wart, horny goat weed, yin yang huo, it's a yang tonic, one of the relatively few yang tonics that we can grow here. Quite a uh, ornamental species. It's an evergreen. You can see these are last year's leaves. It would probably look nicer if I had cut those off a little bit sooner. Beautiful flowers. There's five different epimedium species that are used medicinally. This is a cuminatum. There's also a brevicornum and a pubescens, a sagittata, wushanense. I think that's 
all of them. We've got all of them here somewhere or other. There's one little plant of Turkish rocket, sort of a perennial broccoli. Various species of polygonatum coming up here, Solomon seal. These look like all seedling lilies from one of those probably. This shrub here is T, Camellia sinensis, that I'm getting very excited about growing. It's a broadleaf evergreen, so they do get kind of beat up through the winter. You can see a certain amount of damage, but not all that terrible. I have about 20 tea plants scattered around the property of six or seven different varieties. Not all tea varieties are gonna be hardy here. There's another epimedium, uh, another one of the medicinal ones. So I'm gonna assemble all my tea uh, plants in one area and start a little tea garden, get serious about harvesting it. There are a couple of books available on the market about growing your own tea. One of them is from the proprietor of uh, Camellia Forest Nursery down in Chapel Hill, which is an excellent source to buy tea plants, although I think he's sold out of everything at the moment. Gotten very popular. This pink purple thing is, uh, you might perceive it's cabbage family, four petals. And these little seed pods are forming up back here. This is a Rhychophragmus violaceae, the highest uh, protein of anything in the cabbage family. It's a self-sowing winter annual. These will go to seed and then they'll pop up, new ones will pop up uh, about next uh, mid-August to September, and then they'll be there all winter, start flowering in the spring. Very good about sowing itself outdoors. Could use it as part of a edible uh, winter cover crop. Facelia is this one. Very nice self-sowing little annual. Get some nice color in the shady parts of your garden. Climbing up the balcony here we have Shazandra and it is in bloom. We had 19 degrees a few weeks ago so we took it down, laid it on the ground and uh, covered it with some carpet which seems to have helped. The parts that were sticking out got totally fried. I was trying to save the bloom in hopes of getting some fruit. And uh, so there's a flower. You can see all of the flowers I'm seeing seem to be females. And you can see that's gonna be a cluster of little fruits if it gets pollinated. But somehow last year, a few of them managed to get pollinated, even though I, I never saw a male flower on here. There must've been one somewhere. So that's exciting. If I get fruit this year, it'll be the first time I've ever gotten Shazander fruit in uh, more than 10 years of trying. A very nice Daphne here. This was incredibly fragrant for months. Actually, it seems like. Big pink buds form up very early, like February, and you think, oh my God, it's gonna get frozen, but they hang in there through the most outrageous bad weather. We've got a hops meant to climb up here as well. This is one of the hybrid trout lilies, erythroniums that you can buy. I have not tried digging one of these up yet, but erythronium bulbs are extremely popular in Japan, they're very tasty. They make a flower out of them and use it for various purposes. It's super expensive. So I thought, well, maybe these hybrid ones will just have that much of a bigger bulb. And we'll probably get around to trying it. 
uh, when it starts to go dormant, if I can remember, I'll try digging it up. We got a couple of them, this uh, kind of ivory colored one, and then there's a yellow one. The yellow one is called Pagoda, bright yellow one. 